Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Remote Data Monitoring. We are moving on to the second training unit, which focuses on the automation environment. My name is Dr. Liam Moore. I am from the Munster Technological University, based in Cork in Ireland. This series of training is brought to you from the Remain project, which is funded under the Erasmus framework um, through the EU. The objective of this training unit two overall is to understand the automation environment and its architecture and how this relates to industry 4.0. We will also try and get a good high level view of operational technology versus informational technology and how the two differentiate and overlap and how they are converging more and more within industry 4.0. There will be three sub training units under training unit two. The first one which we look at today is Industry 4.0 Architecture. Furthermore, after this, we will look at Operational Technology and Informational Technology, and the final subunit is Operational Technology Components. So now we're going to look at Industry 4.0 Architecture, and this is Training Unit 2.1 under Training Unit 2, which is the Automation Environment. The objective here is going to develop an understanding of Industry 4.0 Device Architecture. When we're talking about architecture, in this scenario, we are talking in reference to ultimately operational technology within the automation environment and how that overlaps into informational technology. And by architecture, we're referring to the design and structure of the systems and networks used to manage and control industrial processes and critical infrastructure. This architecture and infrastructure will encompass a wide range of technologies. Um, and all these technologies are either currently widely used within the automation environment within industry or are going to be used as Industry 4.0 progresses. A lot of these technologies are distinct from traditional information technology, but there is an overlap with traditional inf information technology as the architecture evolves. So the old world current industry 3.0 architecture and this is all in relation to operational technology primarily up as far as a certain point and then information technology overlaps with it when we're referring to operational technology we're talking about all the technology networkable technology that's involved within manufacturing and physical processes currently there is a five layer hierarchical architecture used for industry automation systems the five layers are currently referred to levels, and we start at level zero, which is right at the device point or right at the manufacturing point, all the way up to level four, which is your enterprise management system. The levels are typically kept isolated from other external networks as much as possible, and that is to minimize risk from intrusion or cyber attack or whatever it might be, to make sure that your manufacturing process is robust and not going to be compromised in some way or the other. If you do need to connect to the outside world, generally that happens at the top here, in level four. Communications can go from level to level. So level zero can communicate to level one, level one to level two, two to three and three to four, and vice versa. And communications can also be on the horizontal axis. So anything within level zero potentially commun can communicate with anything else within level zero. In terms of operation technology, level zero, one, and two are primarily fully encompassing the operation technology environment. And then between level two, level three, level four, informational technology um, may come into place. We will talk about the difference between OT and IT in a further training unit. But right now, keep in mind that operation technology, which is the technology in relation to actual manufacturing processes, level zero, one, two, uh, one and two, and information technology, which is technology primarily around data management and communications, level two, three, and four. Starting at level zero or layer zero, this is where your field devices um, are situated. This is the process physical layer, creates the foundation of the automation pyramid. So all your sensors, actuators, 
and any hardware device that can interact with the physical world is going to be at layer zero. Communications between these devices and between these devices up to level one are going to use protocols such as Profinet and Modbus, which are level zero, layer zero physical device protocols, and they can interact with various sensing equipment. It's at this level you're interfacing with the production process itself, and you're actually going to be interfaced to actual production equipment as opposed to any aggregation taking place. You will be directly at the production layer. This is probably the layer that requires the most security, needs to be the most secure, because if something goes wrong here, you will impact physical production process. And this can have a cost value with it, or it can be a life or mission critical event if something goes wrong down here. Above layer zero, we have layer one, which is the control layer. And this is going to include all your devices, such as your PLCs, your programmable logic controllers, or your DCS, your distributed control systems, and any other device that directly manage the physical layer. Data from layer zero is going to be fed up through the pyramid we saw previously to this control layer. The data generates response from the control layer to meet production needs. So the data being fed up from layer zero to layer one is going to have decisions made on it. For example, a PLC might determine that something needs to be actuated or feedback needs to be given to a HMI or whatever it might be, but a layer of control is carried out here. Also, if you are working on control-based processes, this is where your proportional, integral, and derivative control might be carried out using a dedicated PID or using that functionality within the PLC. It is close to the production process. Um, so if actuation decisions need to be made, it can be quickly carried out. And there is no uh, other intermediate layers that need to handle the data for actuation decisions to be carried out. It will be straight from the PLC, a decision will be made, and that decision will be propagated straight down to layer zero. Above layer one, you have layer two, which is your supervisory layer. And this works with and monitors the control layer. This is where you're going to find your SCADA systems, your supervisory control and data acquisition, as well as HMI systems and so on. It allows production line and process engineers to visualize and monitor the control process and make informed decisions. And data here from the SCADA system can be stored in database, databases and historians for further analysis and process optimization. So as a user, this is the layer you may come in to contact with the most or have the most awareness of. And this is supervising all the control systems on layer one, which are in turn interacting with layer zero. Above layer two, you have your manufacturing execution system or your planning layer. This layer has a holistic view of all the production processes and can manage and optimize these production processes and have them working in concert with each other. It can monitor the process from consumables, raw materials, all the way to the finished product. And the MES provides real-time visibility of the plants and organizations' production capabilities. Optimization and issues can be addressed at a holistic level across production from this layer. Finally, at the very top of the pyramid in layer four, you have your ERP system or your management layer. This layer can coordinate all business operations, such as your inventory management, your procurement, your accounting, and integrate that with the MES layer below it. By incorporating all this automation and production data with business data, your executive teams can make organizational wide decisions as they have a complete view of not just the business processes, but because the data has been fed up through the automation network, they have a complete view of the production processes as well, allowing them to combine both sets of data and make organization wide decisions. So all the technologies we talked about in training unit one around IoT and Industry 4.0 are going to change how this layer may look. We may move away from the hierarchical level zero to level four layer, and we may be looking more at 
a completely networked or completely uh, set of clusters where the strict up and down communications may not be so strict. If you have your smart assets down here at the bottom in yellow, they in theory could communicate directly with any other layer above it, um, which would streamline decision making and give an extra layer of visibility all the way up at the management level or the ERP level to what's going on the production floor. There is a number of risks moving over to an industry 4.0 architecture. One of the advantages of the hierarchical level 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 is that the layers are isolated and that to get to layers at level 0, you have to work your data downwards. That won't be the case with industry 4.0. The, the ideal here is that um, any layer can communicate with the assets or communicate with each other without strictly following the hierarchy of industry 3.0. In order to do this, the technologies we discussed previously as long, along with the challenges need to be met. And one of the main challenges around cybersecurity also needs to be met. But this is currently where the predicted trends are going. Industry 4.0 is going to make manufacturing smarter. It's going to make it less flat in terms of structure, more flexible and more flexibility can make it more scalable. It'll allow more dyna dynamic manufacturing process and more dynamic um, capabilities in terms of the whole organization. Your data will be accessible across all layers, which allows utilization of all the manufacturing data right now that may not be utilized and it feeds into that whole theory of big data. We're going to rely heavily on the Internet of Things. And as seen in the previous diagram, interconnectivity is going to be key. Interconnectivity between devices and interconnectivity between layers. This is the current trend in terms of Industry 4.0 architecture and where we expect it to go. So thank you for listening to Training Unit 2.1 and I will see you back here next time to continue on the discussions around the automation environment.